Give me a little intro there, Gomer. Listening to the Station 71 podcast. My name is Mario, and this week I'm joined by my co host, Beth, and Brian. So, uh, we've got some news to discuss. We've got some, uh, I guess, a review kind of, and a fun little game topic to go over. Um, Beth got to do her pass holder preview for Remy's Ratatouille Adventure. So, we're going to hear a little bit about that. We're going to hear her thrilling thoughts i'm totally hyping this up for you because i know what's coming here <laughs> um but yeah let's let's dive into some news first i think that's our favorite place to start so first thing that we have on here is that some construction walls have been installed around primeval whirl um it should really surprise nobody because this attraction hasn't been open for what feels like forever is this finally the the nail in the coffin is it is it totally dead now I mean, oh, the attraction, so. I think probably yes. I think the debate on whether or not Chester and Hester's is sticking around is still up for discussion. Yeah. And, you know, like I said, everybody knows I'm a, I'm a Chester and Hester fan. But this is weird to me because it's like, whether or not you like Primeval World, I think it's undoubtedly like a perfect fit. For Chester and Hester's, mm-hmm. you might hate it, but I mean, what is more of like a roadside fair pop up attraction than a Crazy Mouse roller coaster? So yes. it says on here that that uh, they've pulled a permit for a theming shop here, which I don't get because there's already one right next to it. I would really be sad to see just two gift shops right next to each other where an attraction used to be. Yeah. yeah. Well, there's also been, and I'm I'm using this very loosely because I know there's been articles going around about it, but they talked about it in our Discord today that there's been rumors that Finding Nemo the Musical is not coming back. Um, if that doesn't come back, what do we think is the fate of Dino Land? Do we think it's just done? I I don't really see Disney pouring that much money into this. Like, they have Finding Nemo the Musical, which was a perfectly entertaining option that could eat a bunch of people. They already have all of the, you know, props and costumes and everything. You got Dinosaur, which is a fan favorite. And you got the Carnival Games, which is a tourist trap, but I'm sure still makes a little bit of money. I just, I don't know. I find it hard to believe that Disney is going to take this entire section and just pour a ton of new money into it, doing something different than what's already there. I would say at the most, they're going to find a way to make bits and pieces work in a new theme. Yeah. Yeah. Which, you know, if they were going to dump a bunch of money into it and redo it, then that's fine, too. But if not, you know, I don't get the point of closing down an attraction if you don't really have anything to go there. Mm -hmm. That's what's like, that's what's getting me is like, I. So in the like the vacuum of what could possibly happen here, the fact that Primeval World's got walls up around it right now and then. Finding Nemo the Musical, I feel like, is also a huge anchor there. And again, we're taking that with a grain of salt because the the official news sources haven't really come out about it. Um, but I think that really the only thing that's left is Dinosaur, right? Like, the Carnival Games, yeah, I guess they could probably bring in money, but like, how much are they... How much guest traction are they really holding up? I feel like every time I see them, they're not like... There's not a long line to get to the water shooting carnival game, right? Like that's oh, definitely right, right. I don't know. I just I feel like 
like you said, Brian, I can't see them closing something and putting walls up if there's nothing to go there. It's just so weird because at the same time, I think I'm in the same boat as Beth where, like, I don't think Animal Kingdom is the park that they're going to do something to next. No, and because it's definitely not the park that needs it the most. So, in, yes, I mean, look, I, I like Chester's and Hester's, but I'll admit, yes, it's it's somewhat dated. Um, you know, it and never the theming really... is missed on most people. Yeah, but the, you know, there's there's a lot of other areas and different parks that could use the attention a lot more. So I just don't think, you know, this is something that Disney really needs to put effort into right now. And especially this kind of effort just seems like wasted effort. Yeah, I agree. That being said, you know, I would hate to lose Dinosaur, but it would be really impressive if Disney did say, hey, we're going to completely redo this entire land. Mm -hmm. I just don't see that happening. But I would love to be wrong. But also keep dinosaur. (laughs) (laughs) So, next on our news, or is Mario having technical difficulties? I bumped my mute button. Um, Oh, okay. So. Next news topic that we have on here is that Disney is planning on bringing the Candlelight Processional back uh, in 2021, which is big news for anybody going during the holiday season. This is a big loss if uh, you are a holiday park goer. So good thing to see it coming back. That's exciting. I mean, this is definitely something that a lot of guests need, you know, actively plan a trip around. So I think this will. That's fascinating to me. Mm-hmm. <laughs> not not judgment in a judgmental way. It's just this is not something I've ever taken the time out of my park day to go to, which I obviously need to, and it's been on my to do list for a while. Just the idea that this is something that people do every year religiously, you know, <laughs> yeah. pun intended. <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, I'm interested to see who is going to be the narrators or whatever. I'm sure that'll get announced in the coming weeks. Mm -hmm. Yeah, especially if they're talking about it now. I feel like that that announcement can't be far off. Yeah. So next news topic we've got on here. One that I know that we're all excited about. Uh, Yeehaw Bob Jackson will return to Port Orleans in October. Uh, Looks like performing again once the resort opens on October 14th. He will return shortly after. Um, He announced this on one of his live streams that he's been doing. Uh, No talks of this schedule yet, according to what I've seen. Um, It looks like there's... Talk of it staying the same, talks of it may be changing, but we're not sure. So exciting. Keep your ears posted, as always, for the resort schedule uh, for Bob to come back. Yeah. And I take full responsibility for this as the person who started the Bring Yeehaw Bob back to Port Orleans petition. <laughs> Good job, Beth. I yeah, did it, and- you guys. <laughs> Team Resort Entertainment. <laughs> All jokes aside, though, I am very excited about this. And it is, you know, not Port Orleans without Bob. So Mm -hmm. I'm super stoked that he's coming back. Definitely. This is maybe the most exciting news topic for me in in Mm -hmm. a couple months. I mean, yeah, you know, through Beth's uh, petition and just us (laughs) willing it into existence it has happened yes <laughs> finally and then last thing that we've got on here is that uh expedition everest is to undergo a multi-month refurbishment in early 2022 uh looks like it'll be closed from january to mid-april no word on what's going on here um I don't think it's going to be anything, and it seems like most of the sources that 
would announce something like this seem to think it's just general maintenance. Yeah. But always fun to talk about when Expedition Everest goes down. It's weird because, you know, it seems like it's kind of in that that mid-range for the amount of time that it's taking. Like, it's too long to just be a a maintenance upgrade, but it's too short for them to be fixing the Yeti. So right. it does make you wonder what exactly is going on with it. Well, they got a lot of hair ties to clean off. That's true. That'll probably be about 90% of the man hours. Yep. Spent on the <laughs> Honestly, if, they, if that's all they did, I would be fine with that. Oh, man. I I wish there was a way. You know what? It, like, even if they just remodeled that part of the attraction where, like, I don't know, you know, I had, like, a... a a funnel that caught all of the hair bands and just like put them in a trash can or something like that'd yeah. be a fantastic update to make. We can dream. <laughs> so uh, that wraps up all of our news this week. I'm going to pass it over to Beth for the first part of our episode. <laughs> well, let me tell you guys, I got a really long extended review here. Um, No, seriously, the, I just want to go into this saying that I did not watch any walk or ride throughs of the attraction in Paris. So I didn't really know what to expect except for the few still shots that I had seen during construction that were like official Disney postings and whatever and little clips here and there that they had posted. And I don't want to give any too many spoilers or anything. So I'm going to keep it pretty brief. So. Just uh, since you've mentioned that, have you since watched the ride-throughs of the Paris attraction? I have not, no. Okay, I would be interested to see if you can, um, like, if you watch one, how it compares, like, if the ride-through looks similar. Well, I do have a friend who is a cast member who rode during cast member previews, and she said that it's basically a carbon copy. But Interesting. That makes sense. Yeah. So... I just, I feel like I didn't have super high hopes for it, but I also was still underwhelmed at the same time, which is kind of unfortunate. Yeah, you know, it's always nice to have a new thing to do at the parks because as somebody who goes as often as I do, a new thing is cool. It's like, ooh, something to experience that I haven't experienced before. And I will start by saying the area itself is very cute and very well done. It is a little small, but I feel like it feels a little bigger than it actually is. So they did a nice job with, you know, forced perspective and making it feel a little bigger than the space actually is. Um, the attraction itself, I feel like if I were a child, would have been very exciting and fun. But as an adult, it was a little, like I said, a little underwhelming. There was. A lot less practical effects than I was hoping for. Um, you know, and I, I try to take, you know, take all of this with a grain of salt. I feel like any attraction that I ride from now on, in the back of my mind, I'm going to be thinking about Rise of the Resistance. And after having seen what is possible, this was a big letdown for that reason. As a high pedestal to be putting. It's an extremely on. high pedestal. I understand. I know. And it's not really fair. I, I completely agree that it's not fair at all. But um, it was just so many screens, but didn't really feel like they were as well utilized as Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. You know, the whole point of a trackless ride is, to me, the excitement is... You don't know what's going to happen next. But this is literally a you're in the movie for, you know, bits and pieces. Like if you've seen the movie, you know exactly what's going to happen next. You know what I mean? So I don't know. The Some of the effects were really nice. The practical parts that they did have were really well done and really cool. And I would have liked to have seen more of that. But um like I said, take my opinion with a grain of salt because it's a very cute attraction, I will say. But it is not a thrill ride. And 
I wouldn't necessarily recommend waiting a super duper long time for it. I think I waited for my. What do you think is maybe like maybe like fifteen yeah. or twenty minutes? Is that like what the max you would wait for? That would be. Do you think? Yeah, probably. I mean, you know, maybe half an hour if I was like there with somebody who wanted to ride it. I wouldn't mind waiting half an hour, but if I was there by myself, I would probably only get in if it was like a 15 or 20 minute wait. Was there anything that was kind of like a standout in terms of like just the attraction itself? Like anything that I know you said you were underwhelmed, but anything that was like a bright side, I guess. Yeah, I mean, this is not really even a spoiler because I feel like it's been in all the promotional art, but the one scene that has like the most prop pieces, I thought was extremely cool. And I think that's probably part of the reason I was as disappointed as I was is because I wanted more of that. I was like, because I am a huge fan of the like you know you're shrinking down to whatever size you know obviously in this case you're supposed to be rat sized and that's why i loved you know the honey i shrunk the kids play set i love stuff like that like big gigantic you know out of this world sized set pieces so that particular scene was really cool to me so i will give it props for that nice but all of this to say um, that I mean, definitely ride it. Like you said, it's mostly mostly practical. Good. I was just gonna say it's mostly practical set pieces and screens. So is right. there anything you would compare it to? I mean, I guess I would probably compare it the most to Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway. That checks out. Um, I'd say that Mickey and Minnie's probably has a little less prop involvement even, but I feel like the way that they did Mickey and Minnie's was better executed because of the unexpectedness of it. And I feel like you were constantly moving from place to place and you're like, Ooh, what's going to happen now? Which, like I said, if you know the storyline of Ratatouille, you kind of know where it's going. Cause it's just like a, you're living inside the movie for a little while. Which, gotcha. you know, it was it was cool. It was cute. I would ride it again. I just wouldn't wait a long time for it. That makes sense. I mean, honestly, I feel like that's kind of what Epcot is wanting in World Showcase. You know, not e-ticket attractions. Not You know, they don't need stuff over there that's going to be drawing in tons of crowds. But, you know, some... Cute little attractions, especially stuff, you know, that kids will enjoy while their parents are enjoying the more adult aspects of Epcot. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, and I think it would be, you know, a good break in the walking around the world showcase. Yeah. That's I mean, that also brings up a good question, too. Do you feel like this kind of ride is a good fit for Epcot or... I mean, I know everybody's super big against the whole like Frozen Ever After syndrome of like, let's throw a movie book report into World Showcase. Do you think that this fits better in terms of that? Or is it just uh, kind of the same vein? No, I actually would say that I think it fits better just because the, you know, the whole movie of Ratatouille is very deeply rooted in French cuisine, which as anyone that goes to Epcot knows, it's all about the food and drinks. You know, so Mm -hmm. that and obviously the fact that it's set in France is a big factor, whereas Frozen, you know, as we've discussed many times, just feels like a blatant IP grab. This feels like it does fit in a little more. And the way that the like section of that land looks integrates it really well is also And the queue is actually really cool, too. Just for nice. the record, it the queue is very well done and has a bunch of cute parts and is very photo worthy as well. So I will give big props to the queue. I enjoyed that. So how many rats out of 10 do you give it? <laughs> um, 
I would give it like five rats. You know, okay. it's very middle of the road kind of, you know, it wasn't a bad attraction, but it's not, you know, going to go down as one of my favorites of all time. Okay. Five chunks of cheese out of ten. <laughs> Nice. So I guess that's going to bring us to the final uh, bit of our discussion here. I know you said that it was kind of brief. Um, last thing we wanted to kind of talk about this week was just a a little quick, fun, semi-blue sky thing. Uh, uh, we want to talk about some of our Wishes for the 50th. I wish Kirsten was here for that segue. Um, (laughs) And some things that we kind of hope might happen. Uh, We had gotten some feedback to do something like this a little while ago from one of our listeners, Vanessa. Um, She had suggested hoping or what we're hoping for each host can go through, what celebrations, attractions they would like to have to see open or updated and add some extra magic to the resorts as a whole. During the Year of a Million Dreams, they did stuff like fast pass tags to an entire fa- an entire family upon entrance to the park, or stay in Cinderella's castle for a night, special events in each park, that sort of thing. Um, we did kind of wait a little too long on this one, because the 50th is, like, next month. But, that said, um, we can definitely talk about some things that we had hoped for, and maybe they'll surprise us with some stuff. So, yeah. Anybody want to go first? Well, before we dive too far into the actual things she suggested, I think it's a uh, a neat point to touch on the year of a million dreams because I think Disney doing something like that right now would be hugely beneficial to them. They're not exactly in the public and Disney fans' good graces right now with a lot of decisions they've made, and I think something like this would do a lot, if only for PR's sake. Yeah. I'm kind of surprised they haven't. It's one of those things that doesn't really cost them anything, but it Mm -hmm. leaves people with a much better taste in their mouth about the parks and Disney as a whole, so I guess tying this in, yeah, I would love to see them do year of a million dreams again for the 50th plus just for morale in the sense of how awful the last year and a half two years have been Mm -hmm. it would be a breath of fresh air to have you know here are a bunch of wishes being granted or here are a bunch of cool things happening randomly to people like random acts of kindness yeah yeah and i think i think that would be a good way to do it like you know, give out just, I mean, it's easy to hit the ones that they already did, right? Like the free fast passes or, um, you know, say it's Cinderella's castle. Um, do they still do like the, the family to open the park too? I don't think so. Cause even that would be nice. Like I remember they used to bring a family up on the train station and they would open the park. Um, that was not even a year of a million dreams thing. That was yeah. just a regular occurrence. But even if they brought them up to the Cinderella Castle stage and just, you know, they got to wave as guests came yeah, in, like, the like little bits of magic would be nice. It literally does not cost Disney anything to do, you know? So, I'd love to see that again. If only. I think mm-hmm. we're we're very far beyond that, but it's fine. Is it... I mean, it's got to be because, you know, (laughs) the mouse giveth, the mouse taketh away. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Um, But also, like, kind of similarly, I was thinking, like, simple ride overlays and things that they could do. Like, I don't know, even do something as simple as play different music on Space Mountain or I don't know. That's an easy kind of grab one. I, I yeah, that's an easy one. I would think you know it, it would take a little bit more effort, but like maybe do a special fill our magic, you know, we're doing something to celebrate, and you know it could be a look back at all the movies that have come out since the park opened or something. You know, there's well, to be fair, we are getting the the special fill our magic, and by that I mean we're getting the Coco scene. 
<laughs> I would like to see something, maybe a little bit more effort put into it. But you know, it's it's stuff. Like obviously, it would have been really cool to have a new e-ticket attraction. It would have been really cool if Tron had opened for the fiftieth. But it felt like Disney missed a lot of low effort things that could have been done to help improve it. Brian, Remy's Ratatouille Adventure <laughs> oh. opened in time. Excuse and me. And we just discussed how that is definitely an e-ticket attraction. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but no, I totally agree with you. You know, I, I'm excited about the the few things that they have announced that will be open in time. You know, we got the new restaurant at Epcot coming up. Club Cool is supposed to be opening in time, if I recall correctly, right? It should be open, yeah. And I just, I don't know. it. I know we've had like a weird thing with the pandemic going on. And they're probably using that as a big excuse, which is not completely understandable. I know a lot of the things that they could have done as far as, you know, like we were saying with the Year of a Million Dreams aren't really possible right now because of COVID. You can't really have close character interactions and whatnot. But it just seems like they could have done more. Like, Year of a Million Dreams was a bigger deal than the 50th anniversary. Mm -hmm. You know, and obviously, with the pandemic and everything, it would have taken away a lot of the, like, you know, boots on the ground stuff that they could have done at the time. But on the other hand, it's like, you had plenty of time to plan stuff though you know right <laughs> so where is this you know low effort but still meaningful stuff that you could have done for the 50th and you know what could have been really cool and would have been a really easy thing in my opinion i don't know the logistics of it if it's actually easy but it sounds like it would be easy in my head is say hey since it's the 50th anniversary, we're going to bring back a bunch of old stuff that has been popular throughout the years. You know, like, Dream Along with Mickey is back on the stage for, like, this two-week period. And then we're going to bring back another stage show from the past for this two-week period. Or yeah. whatever, you know what I mean? Like, they probably still have the costumes for a lot of old shows or parades, like, you know... Obviously, probably not the best example, but how they had like the high school musical parade at Hollywood Studios, like that wouldn't be too hard to throw together as like a throwback thing or something similar, at least. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I can't imagine that that would be hard for them to do. Yeah. And trust me, what I wouldn't give to see Dream Along with Mickey in person one more time. <laughs> you know what I was thinking about the other day too um, they did I can't remember was it Year of a Million Dreams that they did uh, celebrate the magic for and that show felt like really special because of the, the way that it was done and I don't know if you guys remember this but it was the one that they did the, the guest pictures on the castle it, it kind of took place of the projection show that they do at the end of Happily Ever After now, uh, the Once Upon a Time or whatever it is. Um, but like that, that would be cool, and that would be really low effort. I mean, you have Fast Pass photographers around the park already. Just do something like that. Yeah. Or even That's just like a cavalcade with rare characters, and you can see, you know, these rare characters randomly. It's like no, you never know which characters you're going to see. Kind of thing. Mm. I just feel like it, all, all they had to do was make this about throwbacks, and they've already got half the work done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I agree. And it's unfortunate. And, and nostalgia um, is hot right now, y'all. Mm -hmm. I think this would have worked really well, in yeah. my hum humble opinion. I mean, even stuff like bring back 
like throwback style merchandise like yeah old, old designs that used to be sold in the parks you know stuff like that i would can be imagine cool. that's not coming i hope not and, and like i don't mean like oh let's make like you know 70s colors stuff like literally like bring back the stuff that you used to make you know how many Disney fans would go out and buy that stuff if this was like a limited time that they could get it again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. You know what they could have not done is announce Disney Genie Plus right before. (laughs) And that would have been great, too, just to, you know, we're going to keep the old Fast Pass system just for a little bit longer so that everybody (laughs) is not mad at us about it. While Um, you're in there, you might as well just uh, roll out the Fast Pass kiosks because they're there somewhere. That would have been the best throwback. Just give us... the just, adrenaline of running through the parks <laughs> trying to get the fast passes I want before they're gone. <laughs> as much fun as that would be and as hilarious as it would be, can you just imagine the backlash? Oh God, the chaos, some, too. Oh my God. From some Karen that has been like planning a trip for a year and they show up and it's like, hey, no, we're going to do paper fast passes for throwback to. Disney. Oh man. They could have even just done it as like a supplementary thing. Like in announce your, you know, cash grabby genie plus lightning lane stuff. But guess what else? We're gonna have paper fast passes back for a limited time only. Yeah. And those are just additional ones in the pool. Yeah. Plus or- I would have just gone to like get them to collect them because I just wanted to have all of the paper fast passes for nostalgia. I also think uh, this is totally kind of off of the paper fast pass thing, but how likely are we to get just something as stupid as like new icons on the My Disney Experience app specifically for the 50th, like Mickey in a different costume or something? Oh my gosh. Without a doubt, have that. A new trivia game on the. Oh no, they won't they won't have that. That's too much to to code. Don't give them that much. (laughs) My bad. I was trying to reach for the stars here, I guess. They added a new game in there and then it like crashed fast pass selection for the day. (laughs) Oh my god. Oh man. You know, it's funny because they will do that and then like, you know, Disney corporate will just be like damn, we done good, guys. You know, they'll be patting (laughs) themselves on the back. Oh, man, yeah. (sighs) So, let's say, what Uh, is, like, the one throwback thing? Let's, you know, let's blue sky real big here right now. If you could bring back one thing... As a throwback just for this celebration to experience it one more time, what would you pick? Oh, that's tough. If we're staying specifically in Magic Kingdom, I know this probably might seem like I'm throwing away a pick, but like, I would love for them to bring back Mr. Toad's Wild Ride just because it was my favorite as a kid for no explainable reason. And I would just love to see, you know, how it held up against attractions of the day, which I think would be a very cool thing to do because it's, you know, if we're using the 50th as a way to look back, it's kind of like a look how far we've come type thing, you know, which I think could be a lot of fun. Yeah. That would be you know, cool. And I, I genuinely agree with that because there's not a lot that hasn't, like not a lot of the classic attractions have really gone away to the same bang that I guess Mr. Toad did. Um, that would take some insane imagineering though. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, while we're at it, if we're going to go that drastic, Just bring back the sky buckets too, right? <laughs> um, 
So but that's no. your pick, Mario? No, 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 not even, <laughs> not, not even close. I don't know. That's a really hard question because I feel like for something that would be celebrating the fiftieth, you need to, it needs to be an actual like was there on opening day or had a big impact on the park, right? And I didn't say that. That was not a stipulation. No, no, no. I mean, I'm just thinking like for it to be a thing that's like celebrate Disney. I feel like that's like that is where my brain goes. Is I feel like it's got to be something like that. Mm -hmm. Um, but I don't know what else I could possibly say to bring back. So here's what I would say here, and I'll give you the rationale. So if we're sticking to Magic Kingdom, I would probably say to bring back the Main Street Electrical Parade. Yeah, I'm down with that. But if I had another pick from like a like you were kind of saying, Mario, where it this wasn't obviously opening day like 50 years ago or anything, but I feel like this would be a very cool thing to take us back to our roots is to reopen the animation academy at Hollywood Studios and have like people actually animating that you that can would watch. Be very cool. I yeah. think that would be that could be a nice thing to bring back for you know celebrating 50 years of Disney World. I know that's more directed at the movies, but I think that would be a, a neat experience. I like that. You know, in Main Street Electrical Parade, I, like that it's not even really like a blue sky thing. Like they they could do that. They that, could. They really could do that. Maybe they're keeping it up their sleeve. Maybe hey, they can. I doubt it. I really doubt it. I highly doubt it as well, just with the, the landscape of what's been going on the past couple of months. But yeah. I, hey, I'd be glad to be proven wrong. <laughs> I think one, two, if we're talking like just completely blue sky, because this one just absolutely could not be done. But to bring back 20,000 leagues, I mean, mm. that would be sick. But again, we're not going to demolish like the newest section of the park to bring back the <laughs> right. old attraction. Yeah. I, you know, I was thinking another thing too. Th this would have very like, little impact on the modern day guest and i think that this is kind of a, a funny thing that they could do that um nobody would really see coming but they could bring back uh the first fireworks that were in the parks that i think it's the fantasy in the sky or whatever it is um because they used to bring that back all the time for like fourth of july and special events and I feel like that would be one that D Disney could just easily do because it's not like projections on the castle right. or anything. Yeah, that would be cool. I feel I mean, like if they announced that, everybody would be like, but but what is that? <laughs> but, you know, honestly, like uh, on that note, just like a cool thing to do would be like, let's say one night, maybe for the 50th. They start at like 730 whenever sundown is and they do like at least maybe not entire shows, but, you know, like snippets of the fireworks show from the beginning until, you know, up to what we've got now, happily ever after, or whatever they're going to do for the, you know, the 50th. And as a way to say, like, look at the progression of the firework or the, you know, and the, the projection mapping technology over the years. Like, I think that would be a very cool show that would be perfect for the 50th. Yeah. yeah. That would be awesome. You know what else I think would have been great? And I know, obviously, why this couldn't happen right now but it would have just felt right if they had got the train up and running in time mm -hmm. yeah i think that would be the perfect one to bring back i also think it could have been really cool if they had done maybe like a uh, costumes through the years like oh, yeah. Obviously, you can't have like Cinderella stand, like old Cinderella costume standing next to new Cinderella costume because that's not canon that there are two Cinderellas in the world or whatever. But like maybe something in the same vein where you have like, like the older the princess is, the older the costume is or something like that. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like you have Snow White in like a really, like her really old costume and then you have Cinderella and 
so on and so forth. And then you have the most recent princesses in their new fancy garb. What I'm hearing is you want those creepy Mickey Mouse costumes back. No, that's the um, one that I don't want. No, those are exempt. This is only for face characters, Mario. (laughs) The other problematic (laughs) issue is what do we do with Jasmine? Oh, Oh, true. Oh, God. The men can't see her stomach. It's too much. (laughs) It's unsavory. But or if they could have just like made a new stage show that weaved in old stage shows and then ended with something new, like you were saying, as like with the progression of the fireworks, you could have like you know the progression of the castle stage show, which I don't really understand why they're not doing stage shows because they're doing fireworks, which is causing crowding, and I thought the point was to not. Like, the reason they weren't doing it was because they didn't want to cause a crowd? It's, it feels more and more like security theater to me because, yeah, it doesn't make sense. But it's for them to say, you know, oh, no, look, see, we're still doing stuff to mitigate crowds. And it's like, well, I don't think it makes that much of a difference if you've got, you know, a couple thousand people gather in a small area once a day or twice a day, you know? So, right. Yeah. It's got a. I would imagine it also probably has stuff to do with um, the unions. Yeah, that's what I was thinking. Yeah. Like the unions are more likely mm-hmm. involved in that than we think. Right. But they still have them doing the cavalcades. I guess maybe singing and dancing union actors are different than sitting on a float waving actors. I it, I think that's yeah. I think that's where the line is kind of drawn. Is like the singing and voice acting like once you do once you hit that point it's not union yeah i think as soon as they talk they're union like i think they have to be union to talk which some of those princesses talk on the floats are they talking or are they lip syncing Mm. Mm, good point The world may never know. What, yeah, what would know. you guys? Sorry, go ahead. No, go ahead. No. I was gonna say, what, what would you guys think if they did like a, um, like an expanded land or something, like just small kind of walkthroughs? Like I'm thinking the Mickey's Birthday Land and stuff like that. Museum of the Weird. Ooh. Absolutely. Do it, Disney. I bet you won't. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, even if they did something like giving our haunted mansion a hatbox ghost, like yeah, y'all, uh, we're just a little so, we're so abused that we're just <laughs> like anything, please. <laughs> uh. Oh man! But honestly, that's the thing. It's like. I mean, with the pandemic, we know that this wasn't going to be what the you know what was originally planned out years ago. But it's like. Just show us some effort, you know, like give us a little something. Show us you're still trying. I feel like the kid in the Incredibles, the like (laughs) that's that's where I'm at right now. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And it's the part that kills me is it feels like it's just so easy, right? Like. Mm A lot of these things are low effort. Like we're not even asking for new rides or things to be open. Like I I don't know. I feel like if they if this is a bust and the only thing that we get is the character statues and like limited time merchandise, it's going to feel real bad. Mhm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, totally agree. I mean, it's like I don't know. This is very existential way to look at this, but it's like, you know, this is probably the the biggest Disney year anniversary that I'm going to see in my lifetime. You know, it would be nice yeah. for them yeah. to have, have done it big for this one. How nice of you to... <laughs> how nice of you to do something for me, Disney. Yeah. I don't know, and I just, I really feel like like you said, we're not even asking for them to give us brand new, a, a bunch of brand new attractions in time for this. 
Because that's obviously, you know, not happening at this point, except for Ratatouille, obviously. But just do something entertainment-wise, you know? I'm sure, like, you could definitely have thrown more stuff together than it looks like we're going to be getting. Like, we got new, I guess, kind of new shows at each park, or at least the icons are going to have some sort of sparkly or projections or something. But I just really feel like they could have focused so much more on entertainment Mm -hmm. and it would have made this feel like a bigger celebration. I mean, for Mickey's 90th birthday party, we got Move It, Shake It, Mouse could dance it. Like, for God's sake, is this the best we can do for the 50th? You know, I, I know that this stuff takes more effort than we're making it out to be. But still, it's like... With everything that's been going on, with the price increases and just all the kind of negative PR that's been surrounding, like, yeah, do something with entertainment, put a, you know, a spotlight back on the cast members and the entertainers that make the park special, and just do a little something with that. It's low effort. Use some of this money that you're getting from raising the prices. And just do a little something with it. Mm-hmm. Plus, it's just like, you know, the attractions are what regular people go, like not dis- big Disney nerds. The attractions and the, like, quote-unquote permanent stuff, that's what makes people want to go to Disney World. Whereas I feel like the entertainment is what keeps people going back because it's changing more frequently. Right. So it's like, give people something special to remember about this trip, which may or may not be their once in a lifetime, or it may be their 50th time going to the parks, you know? This could, they could have done something that's going to be like, oh my gosh, I remember that. Even, you know, I know a lot of people hate the 25th birthday cake castle, but you bet your butt that everyone that saw that castle remembers it. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. I would so much rather them do something like that and you know i'd look at it and say well i didn't really like that but you know what they tried damn it you know (laughs) like at least they try yeah i would so much rather them shoot for something and miss than just play it conservative like this Mm -hmm. you know what i i would absolutely love for them to do that disney is never ever going to do in you know any of these anniversaries um, mm-hmm. I would love for them to do a acknowledgement of these sort of things where they either auctioned off or um, had some kind of like mini museum of old things. Like we were talking about before that you can buy a piece of the birthday cake castle on eBay, right? Like mm-hmm. how cool would it be if Disney themselves was auctioning it off at like some kind of big fan event? Yeah. And even and then, it- like... I don't think people would care. Uh, this is going to sound horrible. I don't think people would care as much where the money was going. Just the fact that they would be able to be in the room where that happens, right? Like the whole uh, cast connection thing. I know people talk about that a lot, even, you know, though they don't have cast member connections and they want to try to get into there to see what stuff is there. Like, I think that would just draw a big crowd if Disney was like, you know what, for one day we're going to auction off a bunch of stuff. If you can make it, you can make it. We're going to sell tickets to the auction and. These are some things we might auction off. It, absolutely. Like, I would go to that knowing full well that I would not be able to afford anything that they were auctioning off there. But, like, I would love to just see what the prices got up to. That would be insanely entertaining to me. Yeah. Or to just kind of do an expanded version of, like, One Man's Dream and bring a bunch of stuff out of the archives that's not going to be auctioned. Just to see it. Just to look yeah. at it. Or even like, um, do you, you guys remember the the pins that they had that had the little pieces of attraction in yes. them? Yes. Try to do some oh, more of those. Yes. Right. Yes. I'm sure yes. they have some pieces of things lying around somewhere. Like break a light bulb off of uh, Main Street Electrical Parade and sell like the, a little tiny sliver of glass from that. You've got a hundred pieces. Right. There I you would go. buy that. Mm-hmm. And it's like, and that's stuff that Disney will make money off of. Mm-hmm. Everybody wins. Yep. Making it easy for you. 
<laughs> Maybe they have some tricks up their sleeve that we, you know, are they're keeping really close to the vest, you guys. We can ha- be maybe a, just a slight tad bit optimistic, even though it's probably going to end up hurting us. I'm, what is... I'm... God. No, I'm saying I, I hope they are. I hope there's, like, secret surprises, but at the same time, it's like... I don't know. I feel like if there was something like that, it would have leaked out somehow. We would know about it at this point, so it's hard for me to realistically believe it could happen yeah i don't know they've done a you know obviously this is marvel not disney but i feel like marvel and star wars even have done a pretty good job in recent years of keeping a big bombshells under wraps so maybe this is possible too maybe hopefully what is the is there like one thing that you guys would drop everything and plan a trip for if they announced it today as like part of the 50th Mm. Mm. this is hard for me to say because i'm already going a week after (laughs) but yeah but if you weren't like say you had but if they said we're only gonna bring back main street electrical parade on october 1st Assuming I could even get a park pass at this point, which I probably can't, but I might do that. I might yeah. go just for that. I'd agree yeah. with that. If they did that, if you know, I, what I would love to see would just be like them using this stage and maybe have like a a small thing where you know different imagineers came and just like spoke to the crowd for short periods of time about you know some of the stuff that they worked on and and just the histories of the parks like yeah i would say i'll be surprised if they don't do something like that on the on october 1st even if it's just you know josh demaro or whatever and maybe a handful of other people Mm mm-hmm I would be shocked if they don't have some sort of addressing people from the stage. Of, hey, it's the day, you know, because they, they did that on the 45th. And that was not nearly as big a milestone. Well, that's when we had our favorite dude in the world, Bob Iger, running things, though. So, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I would yet? love to see Michael Eisner, honestly, you guys. I would love to see him like try to stumble through a speech. I would definitely just want to hear him up. say hello in person. <laughs> wasn't there a? Uh, I gotta look this up now because wasn't there a thing where he was part of a, a panel that was speaking about something? Very descriptive like, there. Sorry, I'm trying to like. Is <laughs> a part speaking... of a panel speaking about something? I can almost I was... guarantee that happened. <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna say he's speaking about something with Disney recently. Um, um I think it was him. I'm gonna have to look it up. Two seconds and I'll find the article. I'm pretty sure I remember where it was posted. You know what else would have been super easy? This is the easiest thing maybe they could have done is Throwback snacks, like snacks that everybody liked and they don't sell anymore. Anything or like going or like going back to original recipes. That would be cool. Just to taste the difference. So this is what it would have tasted like in 1971 based on the recipe. I don't know how different it would be. Using emu instead of turkey legs. Well, there you go. <laughs> but no, that would be cool. Um, and yeah, like you said, that's relatively low effort. Yeah, I can't find the article. Maybe this was like some kind of fever dream that I had. <laughs> <laughs> Hmm. 
So what, if anything, do you guys think they're going to do to honor Walt? That's uh, I don't think they've honored Walt in a while, y'all. Uh, it's, <laughs> you know, unfortunately, I, I really think that there's not going to be anything. I don't think that they're going to do anything specific for him or anything about the parks opening. And I don't know, maybe this is me just with like a jaded perspective. I feel like at this point, it's kind of like, uh, oh, well, you're here anyway kind of thing, right? Like, I feel like the 50 is itself is kind of, uh, well, the park turns 50, but you're already going to buy a pass to the park anyway. There's certain little things that are special, but it's not anything big. And I've, I don't know. I don't want to get too negative on this one, but I think them honoring Walt and doing anything, even... Anything beyond maybe putting his voice in the new fireworks show is like so far removed from anything we're going to get. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a good point. Like you said, they were going to sell the tickets anyways. They haven't announced that much for the 50th. And, you know, we already know that the park's going to be at capacity. So, yeah. It does kind of seem like Disney said, why do we need to put a lot of effort into this? At the end of the right. day, it's not going to make a difference to the bottom line. Yeah. You know what else would have felt nice? Coming from this, obviously, as a very abused annual pass holder, is if they had done anything like they did in, on the 45th, year and given like here's an extra month added to your pass here's you know a 30 percent discount on certain restaurants instead of 20 percent or whatever yeah. you know just like things to incentivize the people who are obviously you know the biggest fa some of the biggest fans of the parks mm -hmm. you know and that's even past the 50th, I feel like that's a thing that the Disney company as a whole kind of needs to take a step back and look at is that, you know, okay, yeah, we, we're, we're not going to put a bunch of money into the 50th because we don't need to. But it, it, at what point does that start cutting into how, the, you know, the perception that people have about the park, that perception that keeps people coming back over and over again, mm -hmm. you know, like I. I don't know, just hanging out on, you know, someplace online, on the Disney World subreddit. I see so, so, so many people posting, you know, like, well, you know, it's kind of been a good run, but it looks like we're going to start trying to branch out from other stuff than Disney. Right. And it's like, and that's the issue. You do something special for the 50th, and yes, it might cost you a little bit, but when you have these, you know, thousands upon thousands of families that are coming back that are choosing to make Disney World an annual trip, you give them a special occasion to remember and something to come back the next year for. That's where that starts paying dividends at. Right. And, you know, and I, I think that, you know, I don't want to get too cynical. I don't want to get too negative that I don't think Disney's past that point completely yet. But, you know, I think this is a good example of a time when they could really... You know, like we keep saying, put in a little bit of effort, get that good PR, and just do stuff that makes the people that are coming back and giving you their money want to continue to do that. Yeah, and I think, unfortunately, they have an out, right? Like, we've talked about this a couple times. Like, COVID, as much as it is probably a reason for a lot of the things that they can't do, like... Yeah, you know, a lot of the resorts are opening up after the actual date of the 50th. But if Disney were to come out and in good faith say, hey, you know, the 50th is October 1st. We know that this is the 50th. But we're just going to move it to another date because of COVID, like because things happen or even start just announcing things that are coming after that. Mm -hmm. I, I think that's where it's going to be. 
uh, like they, they've got the out for it and they're not going to do that. And I think you're right that like, you know, at this point with things coming back with the announcement of Genie, like I, I've even heard it, you know, like my family is, we're, we're Disney people, right? Like my mom, my dad, everybody, you know, in my family really does enjoy the trips that we do make down there. But I, I, I had a conversation with my mom the other day and she was saying like, Oh, don't you have to pay for fast passes now? And I had to explain the whole thought of like, you know, it's not yet, it's coming soon, but this is kind of the process for it. And it may not be a bad thing, but like it, it, the way that I had to explain that just felt so bad. Um, and I'm not going to go onto that tirade again because we kind of had the time to talk about that, but like there really is a negative perception of Disney, even to people that don't watch it as closely as we do. And I think you're right. Like you have those families that are starting to say, maybe it's time to do something else. Maybe it's time to, you know, go look other places. Heck, you know, we had a whole conversation in our discord the other day about universal passes and how, you know, just looking at the annual passes, like universal makes a lot of sense. It's just wild that Disney isn't using the one thing that could do a lot of goodwill and running with it. Yeah. Right. It- and, you know, I mean, <laughs> I like to think that it wasn't that long ago, and maybe now it is. But, you know, when I was a kid and we would take a family vacation every year, it was like, you know, there wasn't a question. It was like, okay, yeah, we're going to do the Disney trip every year. And it was, you know, and everybody enjoyed it. And it, I felt like a lot of families were like that. And it just doesn't, like, I don't know, maybe I'm just out of the loop, but, it, like, that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. You know, it's like we have these, you know, big Disney fans like us that are going to continue to go, but it doesn't seem like it's that just unquestioning, oh, we're taking an annual trip to Disney, you know? So I don't know. I feel like that has to do, you know, I'm sure with a combination of the rising costs, but I think a lot of it has to do with this, you know, this, this PR that Disney's getting out about them now. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yep. I feel like, you know, we said it a long time ago. I don't remember exactly how long, but it feels like forever ago that Disney, you know, just continues to price out further and further and further. And many of us who go to Disney, you know, from the people who go a lot to the people who go as regularly as they can, it's like, these are traditions that they're losing Mm -hmm. at the end of the day i feel like once they get to a point where the people who this was a regular thing for them can't afford to do it anymore or don't want to do it because of you know xyz factors that's when they're gonna step back and say man we really messed up well you know the thing that i was just thinking about is that the long-term repercussions of that are going to be the families that aren't going now. Okay, well, when those kids grow up, they're probably not going to either, you know? Right. Like, I, I, I know a huge reason why I love Disney so much and what's, you know, what m- made me fall in love with it was going as a kid. You know, and if I didn't have those experiences, I probably wouldn't be on a podcast right now talking about disney and how much i still love it you know but it's like that's the thing it's it's gonna really show i think in the next generation you Mm -hmm. price out this whole section of of middle class families from being able to do this kind of stuff now their kids aren't going to want to do when they grow up so where does that leave you you know 20 years down the road as a company you know right kind of to jump a little bit off of this because we we have talked about the whole pricing out thing a lot. Um, I'm going to be interested. You know, next year is a D23 year, and I'm going to be interested to see how that goes too. Because you know, COVID screwed up a lot of what they planned for in the last D23. I mean, look at Epcot. That was supposed to be done by the 50th, right? Like, mm-hmm. there was there's no way that that's getting done even before the next D23 event, but. I'm curious to see if this next event that they've already full on come out and announced 
is still going to be a here's what's coming or a catch up on here's where we need when these things are coming out. Here's we announced these things already. Here's the new timeline. And I think that's going to be a big tell of where everything's headed. Yeah. And honestly, I think that they're going to need to give people an update of the stuff that they were working on. But I think for this one, even if they need to kind of say, hey, guys, we need to prepare to release maybe a couple of things earlier than we were initially planning on releasing them to the public. Like, I think there needs to be that hopeful look to the future for what's coming and that they need to put a lot of emphasis on that, even if it's a lot of just teaser type stuff, because... Again, if we get another huge event, another D23, after all this stuff, and it's like, oh, yeah, well, sorry, we don't have a whole lot to show you this year. It's like, man, you know, at a certain point, you got to do something to get back in people's good graces. Yeah. We want to love you, Disney. Just let us. Give us the reasons. Yeah, and I mean, I don't think it's funny. I don't think any of us here are um, in a position where we're going to stop going oh. to Disney. <laughs> I think that that's still on the, you know, the horizon for all of us. But I think that it's just interesting now, and this, this goes for the 50th too, like, it's interesting now how much just feels like yeah, it probably could have been done before now. Mm-hmm. Well, so how do we turn it uh, around to end on a positive note? Just, just what I was about to ask. <laughs> um, well, what things do we think realistically could happen for the 50th? I know we kind of did like little predictions, but do we think that any of the stuff that has been actually, you know what? Let's spin this in a different direction. Um, what things that have been announced do we think are going to have a positive impact on the 50th? The 50th. I'm really excited, honestly, about the uh, the new fireworks and projection show. I think that them incorporating like Main Street into it is going to be a really cool, unique experience. I think it's going to do a great job of you know dispersing crowds, and not even just like just because of COVID, like. I think it would be very cool to now have it, like, be, you know, you get a different experience depending on where you're standing. So not everybody wants to crowd in front of the castle. Now more people actually want to be back on Main Street. Like, I think that's really cool, and I'm I'm hoping that that's something that they've taken, you know, continue developing. Let me take... Let me take your uh, excitement and throw it in a different direction, I hope. 100% hope that this new perspective of fireworks proves my theory that the reason we don't have a nighttime show is because of Happily Ever After and or a nighttime parade is because of Happily Ever After and the logistics of trying to run parade floats through there while people are gathering for Happily Ever After and I hope that this disperses crowds enough so that once things start to go back to normal we can talk about even doing something like Festival of Fantasy at night. <laughs> like, just give me something. <laughs> but I agree. I think of the things uh, out there and in the world, I think the fireworks, that's the one thing that I'm actually thinking may have a positive long-term impact on the parks. I think so, yeah. Are we talking specifically Magic Kingdom? Anything, really, I guess. I mean... Because I think I'm most excited about Harmonious. Yeah. It's funny that that's a big thing that's not happening in Magic Kingdom that's actually going to probably be done before the 50th. (laughs) Yeah. I'm excited to see it. Yeah. It's, you know, and it's... It's cool to me because I feel like other than maybe Animal Kingdom, you know, like... Epcot is is the one park that they could say, you know what, you know, we can have kind of just like a subtle, tasteful nighttime show to kind of just, you know, 
gracefully wrap up the night. But from the looks of it, they were like, nah, we are going big for this yeah. one. Yeah. <laughs> Which I love, so more power to them. I just hope that they can do something about those barges. I mean, I, I, you know, I think it's just like kind of iconic, you know, the barges. <laughs> I mean, like even when they were doing illuminations, you know, the, a lot of times they'd be out there before it got dark and, you know, I yeah. think it's kind of cool seeing this boat that's been like, repeatedly set on fire that doesn't even look like it should still be able to float go out there <laughs> i miss it like putting away into the lake you know seeing it just slowly glide out there like the harmonious barges are just there <laughs> yeah it just i hate the sight lines but hopefully they'll be worth it to have those big ugly barges Maybe I'll get super attached to the barges after I see Harmonious, and I'll just love them from then on. Who knows? Please stand clear of the doors. Por favor, manténganse alejado de las puertas.